to Audio Tree Live. Today is Tuesday, April 17th, 2018, and we are very excited to have Lindy Ortega in the studio with us today. Take it away whenever you're ready.
Live with Lindy Ortega. Sounds amazing, everybody. How are you all doing? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. Um, so on your, I was very excited when I saw on your advance sheet that you sort of filled out before. We share a very, um, not, I don't know if it's uncommon, but we share a similar interest in tornadoes, storms, and air crash investigation. <laughs> That's crazy. You're like my soul sister. I know. I think we are. So what, why are you so interested in those things? Uh, well, for the air crash investigation, I know it seems very morbid, but I just find the whole investigative process really interesting, the whole forensics of it. Uh -huh. I mean, it's such, um, when, whenever you see, hear of a plane crash and it happens over like a huge debris field, they have to put all these little pieces together mm -hmm. and it could be something as simple as like a little screw or something that just wasn't put in properly and yeah. it's amazing to me that they're able to figure figure it out yeah it it does it are you scared of flying no I love flying really yeah I okay love it. because for me it was like a fear of flying so I was like I have to learn everything I possibly can about this right about all the things that could possibly go wrong does it help <laughs> nope <laughs> nope I'm always on a plane I mean, I've and I'm watched like, every episode of Mayday that exists out there and so like I always think about all the scenarios mm -hmm. but I don't know. I like. I love turbulence. I'm you one do? of those weirdos that's just like, yeah, give me turbulence. What about the turbulence where like you're you fall a little like yeah a lot. I think it's fun. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I I, like I am to the point where if I'm on a plane and the pitch of the engine changes, I'm like, <laughs> we're dying. This is it. Um, do you like? So there was something that happened today. I think a Southwest flight. Yeah. What happened? Uh, the engine had a malfunction and uh, there was shrapnel that um, put something, a hole, I guess, in the fuselage and a passenger was partially um, blown out and a pass another passenger had to pull them back in. So some sort of mechanical. Was this in the error. air? What's that? Was this, uh, were they on the ground? They landed safely. Everybody made it out alive. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Flying is safe. Yeah. Well, flying is quite, it's like safer than driving, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, do you like, how do you feel about like Amelia Earhart stuff? I love Amelia Earhart. Yeah. What I do you think them. happened to her? Um, didn't they just recently find something where, when didn't they find something? on? Maybe. I thought I read something where they found, they thought they found her plane or something. Oh. But it's probably um, just, she just But I think, I mean, I think any female pilot is, is amazing. Like I love yeah. female pilots. I think it's so cool to see one and I always like get really nerdy around them whenever I see them at mm -hmm. the airport. Um, what do you, this is another, I, I'm just picking your brain because <laughs> what do you think happened to the Malaysian flights? Well, there's so many different uh, scenarios there, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to go with like a completely absurd theory. Okay. I'm going to say a meteorite. Yeah, just I mean, obliterated it. <laughs> that could have happened based you on know, like all of the information that we have, which is like not that. Well, you never much. know. There's like the people say a terrorist or that something happened where everybody just fell asleep and the plane just gradually fell into the ocean and who knows? Or they thought some maybe it might have been shadowed by another plane and taken to an island and mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna say a meteorite. <laughs> all right, I can take that. Yeah, I who can. Knows? I'll take that. Okay. Um. So then, where does the storm fascination come in? Oh, I just, I, I, I don't know. I'm just obsessed with tornadoes really uh -huh. more than, more than anything. I think storms are cool and I'm into like hurricanes and stuff, but tornadoes are my jam. Mesocyclonic, mesocyclonic rotation is, uh, is, is that a specific is, it really kind? gets me, it gets or my goat. <laughs> is that like, is that what, is that a name for tornadoes? Yeah. It's like a mesocyclone is what uh -huh. happens when the storm is churning. Okay. It, it might drop a funnel, which might turn into a tornado, which can range from F0 to F5, possibly F6. Oh. EF6, actually, because it's now enhanced Fujita scale. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> this is so interesting. I used to watch, during the summers, I used to watch Weather Channel just obsessively so I would know when the storms are coming and if a tornado was coming. Yeah, I um, love it. Have you been in a tornado? Not like in, you know, like, not like spinning in no, one. No, I've been, I've been in the center of one. That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> no, I, I've never actually been in a tornado mm. um, and I don't think I'd want to be in a tornado. I would like to see a tornado in a field in the distance safely yeah. churning and not hurting anybody. Yeah. As much as I love storms, I don't like the destruction that they do to people. Mm. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that here in this area, yeah. they, you guys get a lot of uh, tornado warnings. Yeah, but even though, because I, I grew up right outside of Chicago, so you'd yeah. think that I would have seen one, but I've never seen never one. Never seen one. But no. I, I'm attributing that to the buildings of Chicago, maybe? Well, that's you what and I, I that's could what I spend um, like two grand and go storm chasing with an actual storm chaser one day. It's I've like always can, wanted to do that. You can actually that. do that. Yeah. yeah, with like the ability to safely be like, okay, so it's far off in the distance, but look how pretty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You might die, but you probably won't because yeah. we know what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> so you haven't stormed. Chased? No, but I've gotten an offer. Somebody somebody was a storm chaser that was at one of my shows mm-hmm. and said, hey, you know, if I'm ever in your area and storm chasing, you can uh, hop in the truck with me. <laughs> God, are you going to do it? Yeah, Hell I would yeah. do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. Well, tell me all about it when you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for being here. Yeah. I'm excited to hear your next two songs. Okay.
Can I tell a joke? Yeah. What do you call a fascist potato? A dictator. Nice. <laughs> Lindy Ortega, that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So on your latest album, Liberty, which came out a few weeks ago, yeah. um, you cited Ennio Morricone, Morricone as... Ennio Morricone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get the, the flair right. Oh, that's okay. Um, as one of your influences. Yeah. How so? Because I, I know very little about him. So like, in well, what it way was, really, was he... Well, it was really spaghetti western soundtracks, and he just happened to do a lot of the greatest spaghetti western mm -hmm. soundtracks so um so yeah it was him and it was quentin tarantino and it was um linda ronstadt's canciones de mi padre mm -hmm. and it was marty robbins and a, a, a spaghetti western playlist that's on spotify with cool you know music like spindrift and yeah so that was all sort of part of the inspiration okay so for the viewers at home and also maybe me could you define spaghetti western? Oh, well, I don't think I do like authentic mm -hmm. spaghetti western. I sort of do my take on it. So I feel like, but yeah, I guess you, you would hear a lot of horns and a lot of instrumentation. Okay. It's kind of cinematic. Yeah. Um, there's twangy guitar happening. Yes. Sometimes okay. there's harmonicas in there. All right. I yeah. thought I thought as much. I just wanted to make sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a very... Um, your music paints, paints a picture and puts you in a place. 
And I suppose that that is sort of what... Do you like that place? Oh, I love Are that place. Are you enjoying being I, there? I'm very much enjoying <laughs> that place. Um, and it, it sort of comes with its whole, I don't know, vibe necessarily is not the greatest, most descriptive word, but it sort of is how I feel it's, about it. It works. I yeah. It works, yeah. Um, and it also, you also, uh, you dress for it as well, I feel. It, you have amazing, <laughs> you, have ama- you have amazing clothes on right this now. This is like Stevie Nicks meets I was Clint thinking Eastwood. that. <laughs> Do you like Stevie Nicks's style? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. She's the whole great. like witchy sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, how much? How much of your wardrobe would you say is uh, like vintage? Um, it's a lot of it's like secondhand. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it's vintage, but it's just stuff like I just like to go to Goodwill and stuff and yeah. find treasures. Yeah. Do you have thrifting tips? Because I get overwhelmed when I go to like a Goodwill. Well, I'm I like, usually, there's so much. Yeah, I usually have like a specific vision for what I'm looking for, mm-hmm. and I just kind of try to like go to those areas and see if it's there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a tip or a trick. But. Yeah. Um, do you go thrifting on tour a lot? I try to if yeah. I can. Like if there's, if I see there's a vintage store nearby, then yeah. I'll check it out. Is there a, a, a specific, do you have a favorite in a place in America or in Canada? Um, well, you know, I lived in Nashville for five years, so they have mm-hmm. got some really great vintage shops there. Yeah. And um I don't know. I, I, do you want me to list some of them? <laughs> I mean, if you want to. I mean, but. Um, yeah. There's uh, Goodbye Girls and Hip Zipper. And, cool. Yeah. And then there's, uh, I guess, Portland also has some really great vintage shops. But, yeah. But I, I, I just really like your straight up Goodwills. <laughs> yeah. Actually, just for, like we're actually in a really good place for a lot of vintage stores just yeah. around the corner on Milwaukee. I know you guys have to go to Lincoln Hall tonight. <laughs> um, for your show but yeah. if you have time there's a really good boot store right around there on Milwaukee and then a good vintage store as well and I always assume that vintage clothes will be like not as expensive but there's one of them that like really gets me where I'm like I'm gonna get this and then it's like $500 <laughs> oh. I'm like never mind yeah it's kind of like um, those old western shirts used to be pretty easy to come by and mm-hmm. now they're really popular and really yeah. expensive yeah um, Ryan when you were loading in you have that like really sick leather jacket mm-hmm. that has was that thrifted and or a vintage pick yeah yeah it was uh in in australia oh it's so good um all right well if you are in chicago tonight you should go see them at lincoln hall um and her uh lindy ortega's album liberty is out now and i'm excited to hear your last song thank you so much for being here thank you for having us yeah Oh
This has been Lindy Ortega on Audio Tree Live. I like the tornadoes slash hurricanes <laughs> in that song. Um, and once again, if you are in Chicago, go to Lincoln Hall tonight and see her live. And pick up her album, Liberty. It is out now. Thank you to everybody who keeps us going. And the camera and lighting crew, the sound engineers. Thank you to Lindy. Thank you to the band. Um, and thank you guys for watching. See you later.